this video I'll be working through question 3 of the 2019 Level 3 Mechanics exam. Right, question 3. J is enjoying the swing of the playground. The period of one oscillation is 2.4 seconds. J maintains a constant amplitude of 3.3 uh, meters by swinging back and forth to replace energy lost due to friction. So I'm going to get my highlighter and I'm going to highlight this. So this, is, this was the only reason I got the highlighter for the whole entire exam. Friction. It's like the only time I've ever done it for a very long time in any exam. The mass of the system, J in the swing is 70 kilograms. Ooh, okay, yeah, right here. Um, J's motion be considered simple harmonic motion. Calculate the maximum velocity of J in the swing. So, in your formula sheet, you'll have V equals, what is it, omega, so the angular velocity times A, um, and then it can either be cos or sine, depending on whether you started. Um, but I'm just gonna use cos, and in the formula sheet, it's like angular velocity times time. I'm going to put cos theta, and just remember that theta is equal to angular velocity times time. Basically, distance is equal to velocity times time. Um, now, cos theta um, equals 1 when maximum. When maximum. This is the largest cos theta can ever be. If you ever, yeah, the largest cos theta can ever be is 1, is because cos theta, I'll just do it up here, cos theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, it's equal to this ratio. Um, and the definition of the hypotenuse is it's the largest side of the triangle. So as soon as the adjacent gets to the point where it's the same size as the hypotenuse, you no longer have a right angle triangle. Um, right, so there we go. So the maximum velocity um, is just equal to the angular velocity times the amplitude. Um, and that is equal to, we don't have the angular velocity, we have the period. In the formula sheet, you'll have two pi f, um, but because we've got the period, frequency and period are inversely related. So it's going to be uh, divided by the period, which would be uh, T. So that's, that's the formula for angular velocity, 2 pi. Basically, it's essentially angular distance over angular time. Uh, no, <laughs> over regular time. Um, times the amplitude, which is equal to 2 pi divided by 2.4 times, what is it, 0 0.31? Yeah, 0 0.31. And that is equal to 0 0.8. 1157 meters per second, negative 1. V max is equal to 0 0.812 meters per second. I have it Here we go. Um, and you could have used sine or cos because the maximum sine as well is 1. Um, right, use a reference circle or other method to determine how much time J's displacement is greater than 0.2 meters from equilibrium over one period. Right, so I can't find myself a protractor for the life of me, um, so I'm totally going to freehand this one. Um, I'm going to draw a phase diagram. There are two ways to do this question. Um, there's a really, really easy way, but I thought I'd do the harder-ish way first. And there's probably, I'm sure there's other ways in the formula, uh, in the answer schedule. I only have a couple of ways. Um, anyway, so I'm going to draw my phase diagram. Here's my reference circle. Here's my equilibrium position. Um, here's my center, and I'm assuming it's going to start from this side and move up. Uh, from teaching different kids, some kids like to start at the top, and that's like where they start. Um, but I just, I'm just used to polar coordinates. Polar coordinates always start from here and then work their way anti-clockwise. Um, so essentially, here would be, this point here would be 0 0.2 um, meters above equilibrium. So here we're starting at the center, then we go up to 0.2, here would be obviously 0 0.31, and then exactly symmetrical over here would be 0 0.2. Um, again, 0 0.2 meters. Um, and just remember the radius of our circle, of our phase diagram is always the amplitude, it's always 0 0.31. So this length here and this length here, they're both 0 0.31, because that's, that's our amplitude. Um, and because when it's max, it's up here, and that would be our amplitude because it's the furthest from the center. Um, right, so what we're going to try and do is, or what are we actually going to try and do? Um, hmm. I want to calculate this for fun because I know we're, we're going to use it for the second clever method. The angular velocity is 2 pi over the period, and that is equal to 2.617 radians. We're not going to do that just straight away, but we'll use it eventually. Um, here we go, quarter, oops, that's meant to be quarter of a rotation, rotation, um, 
is 0 0.6 seconds. All I did is go 2.4 divided by 4. Um, 24 divided by 4 is 6. Um, and you just knock it back one decimal place. It's 0 0.6. Um, now I'm going to go from y equals 0 um, to y equals 0 0.2. Um, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it mathematically. So I'm going to use when I'm starting at equilibrium, I'm going to have to use sine. So y equals a sine, um, I'll use omega t for now because I'm going to use the other trick later. Um, because I need to, I'm going to try and solve for time. That's what I'm trying to find how long it's at that, like how long it takes to get from here to here. Um, right, so I'm going to rearrange that. So what am I going to get? Um, I'll move the a underneath. So I'm going to have y divided by a, and then take the inverse of sine of both sides, sine inverse, put brackets around that, and that would have left me with just omega t, because if you divide that side by a, moves that a to that side, takes sine inverse of both sides, it gets rid of that sine, um, and that would have left me with omega t, and now I'm going to delete that by dividing that, so I'm going to divide both sides by angular velocity, and that'll just leave me with time. Um, and then if you substitute, substitute in, y is 0 0.2 because it's from 0 to 0 0.2 amplitude is just 0 0.311 angular velocity is 2.617 that'll give you 0 0.267 seconds so it's 0 0.267 seconds from equilibrium up to the like 0 0.2 distance so what i want to do is i want to find out i want to find out that this time here from here to here that's what I want to find, because I only know the time from here to here. So I want to go 0 0.6 minus 0 0.267, um, and that is equal to 0 0.33 um, seconds. So now I know the time from here to here is 0 0.33. Symmetrically, the time from here to here will be 0 0.33 as well, and I could get this whole entire semicircle flip it over and mirror it onto the bottom half and I'd also get 0 0.33, 0 0.33. And you can see there are obviously quarter of a, rota quarter of a rotation, so I'm gonna get this time, multiply it by four, and then I get the total time like above 0 0.2 seconds. Um, so what do I do? I'll go there, uh, four quarters. Yep, so total time. Total time uh, above 0.2 is 1.328 seconds, which is equal to 1.33 seconds. Right, that's the one way to do it. The other way to do it is we are going to, oh, I'll do it quickly. This angle here, this angle here, I'm gonna call that theta prime. Um, because I want to find out what this angle here is theta and what I'm going to do is I know theta prime is equal to sine inverse Opposite over a, uh, opposite over hypotenuse so 0 0.2 that's the opposite over hypotenuse 0 0.31 and that'll give me 0 0.7 radians Cool, I know this theta prime is 0 0.7 radians and now I know that the total like radians in a circle is 2 pi minus four of those little segments so four of those th uh, theta primes gives me four point uh, whoop no 3.47 radians in total um, and now the time is just equal to the angular distance over the angular velocity so 3.478 divided by 2.67 oh 617 equals 1.33 seconds. That's the other way to do it. Um, I hope this is sort of clear. This is like the tricky way to do it. Um, but it's probably the more, I don't know, better way. Right, next question. Jay, stop swinging your legs when the swing is at maximum displacement. On the grid below, sketch a graph of our displacement over the next three periods. Um, include values for time and initial displacement. Right, so I'm gonna to chuck up here. This is maximum, 0.31. This is minimum 0 0.31 and it's negative. Um, I've already counted it out. So I know every five or every 10 spaces um, is like I can fit 30, there are more 30 squares goes up to where, like 
up to here somewhere. So I'm going to pause it and just segment this nicely, but you'd have to count up all the squares yourself. I'm going to put them in. Right, so I've segmented it out. So there are 10 squares, then it's the first period done, another 10 squares, then the second period done, another 10 squares, and the third period done. And each period is 2.4 seconds. It says over the page, the period is 2.4. So it's 2.4, double that, 4.8, add again 2.4 to that, 7.2. The crosses are quarter, so there's quarter of a rotation, half a rotation, uh, three quarters of a rotation, full rotation. Now the trick to doing this is everywhere there's like a, a cross, that's where it's going to cut through the time axis, and everywhere there's a dot, it's going where there's going to be a maximum. So it says over the page there's friction, so this is going to be a decaying graph. Um, so at the top here, it's going to be right at the top. So this is going to start at maximum because um, it starts with like positive displacement. It doesn't start in the center. It says um, when it's at maximum displacement. And oh, I mean, you could probably be mean and well, not mean, but like tricky and try and start at negative and be like, oh, who's the difference? But whatever. I'm going to start at positive. Um, and we're going to go, it would have decreased a bit by the time it gets to here. So that's where the first like bit is. It's going to decrease a bit more by the time it gets to this next inflection. It's going to decrease a bit for this one here, decrease a bit for this one here, decrease a bit for this one here, decrease even more for that one there. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the whole page on the side, because I suck at drawing, and I'm going to go backwards and start from here, cuts through the axis there, goes up to the maximum there, cuts back through the axis, up to the maximum, cuts through, up to the maximum, Cuts through, and you can see how I've sort of roughly done it. I'm gonna freehand it because I'm in a hurry to finish this video. Up to there, and I stuffed that one up, but it's close enough. So there we go. So here we have our decaying graph. We can see it's decaying, and it's hella neat for someone who's uh, artistically challenged. Right, next question. Jay moves to a new swing that has a tire hang vertically on the single chain. The system is, a, it's a conical pendulum. Jay travels at 2.61 meters around the circle of radius 0.411. The total mass NJ is 70 kilograms. Um, friction and mass are negligible. Calculate the tension of the chain supporting the swing and the angle of the chain from the vertical. Um, right, so draw a free body diagram. We have, that's just what I know, the center. Um, we have FT pointing up. FT, we have theta here, and we have FG pointing down. And we know it's going in a circle, so these here must add to a center pointing force. So we're gonna have, um, I'm gonna go down FG, FG, I'm gonna go up, the tension force, FT, and this must equal our net force. I'm gonna just call this F net. And then over here, I'm gonna go F net equals FC, because it's a center pointing force. Now, this is calculation. FC equals MV squared over R. Um, and that is equal to, once you plug in the numbers, 1160.21, because our mass is 70 kilograms, velocity is 2.61, radius is 0 0.44, uh, 411, um, and that is Newtons. Our gravitational force, Fg, is equal to Mg, so it's 70 times 9.81, because you got to round up, you have 3 SF for level 3, 686.7 Newtons, and we can see here, that's a right angle triangle, because this here is a right angle. Uh, we're going to have F T is equal to the square root. It's just Pythagoras, rearranged F C squared minus, uh, plus, I should say, F G squared. Because we've got those two. We've figured them out right here. Um, and that equals 300, and, whoop, 1348 newtons. And it's asking for the angle as well. So I'm going to use the opposite and the adjacent. So tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. In other words, theta is equal to tan inverse. The opposite is the net force, because this here is theta, and that's Fc over Fg. By the time you substitute those numbers in, we should get, because Fc is 1160, um, Fg is 686, we should get 59.37 degrees. In other words, theta is equal to 59.4 degrees.